young uh, assistant professor at that time named Arlon Makovsky, who was to become one of my uh, most uh, frequent courses for uh, more than a decade. So it's a really great pleasure to be here thinking of this uh, time in particular. So, as for today, uh, <coughs> I will uh, give a sort of uh, survey uh, lecture of, uh, on the use of stochastic geometry for modeling wireless networks. This has been developed primarily with a colleague of mine at uh, Ecole Normale, Bartek Vlachichin, and um, covers uh, a few uh, recent papers. So I, I didn't take for granted that everybody would be familiar with stochastic geometry, so I, I will review a few uh, basic models along this line, the Boolean model and the so-called uh, poisson voronoi tessellation. Then I'll go to the uh, main uh, topic of the talk, the signal to interference ratio geometry, uh, with, um, and I will uh, cover uh, various issues in connectivity and coverage. Um, the uh, work on connectivity is a uh, joint work with uh, Olivier Douce and Patrick Tirant uh, uh, of uh, EPFL. And uh, at the end of the talk, I will uh, give a certain number of uh, applications to, well, uh, protocol design. So to the Mac layer of uh, mob mobile adopt network, and this is uh, joint work with Paul Multaler uh, and Bartek as well. And uh, if time allows, on power control in CDMA networks. So let me start with a brief uh, uh, description of um, uh, a few um, key notions of stochastic geometry. So uh, let pi be a point process with points uh, x, i. The Voronoi cell uh, of uh, point x0 is the set of locations of the plane, say y, which are closer from this point x0 than from any other. So this subdivides the uh, plane in uh, uh, convex cells. Uh, which are called the uh, Voronoi uh, tessellation of the plane. So this will be one of the things we will use. Another one is the Boolean model, where one again takes a point process, xi. Uh, well, in most cases, I will take either Poisson or uh, deterministic uh, regular point processes. Uh, <coughs> and uh, on top of that, I add a sequence of ID random compact sets. Uh, and I'll define g plus x to be uh, the translation of the set g of x. And then I look at uh, uh, the following union of uh, sets, which is the union of the gi shifted of xi. So that's the Boolean model, or also the germ grain model. So for instance, in the case of disks, let pi be uh, positive random variables, iid. Um, Think of gi being the ball centered in zero and with radius pi, and you get uh, you get the pictures like this one, where you see here the points of the of the Poisson point process and the disks on top of that. All these. Okay, so um, a few things on the Boolean model that we will use. So first, uh, if one looks at the expectation of the number, it's also called the germ grain model. If one looks at the number of uh, um, grains, so the xi would be the germs and the gi the, 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 the grains. If one looks at the number of, uh, of uh, sets, gi, the grains, which intersect a given um, uh, Borel set V, then the expectation uh, will be finite. So I will do the, uh, 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 this uh, uh, case uh, for arbitrary Poisson processes. So not only the case of the homogeneous one, but also uh, when the underlying measure, intensity measure is mu, right? So if it's the Lebesgue measure, it would just be this expectation would just be the Lebesgue measure of B plus G hat, where G hat, where B plus G hat here is the set of points of the form X plus Y, such that X belongs to B and minus Y belongs to G. So in this case, of course, it would be the same as Y belonging to G. Okay, so this will be finite under natural assumptions, and you can have more. So actually, we can prove that it's a little bit like in the, for those familiar with queuing theory, like the, the GG infinity queue, or the NM infinity queue, more precisely. Um, under moment conditions, the number of balls, say, or sets that cover a given location, uh, follows a Poisson distribution on the integers, and the mean was given on the earlier slide. 
So you completely characterize at least the number of uh, balls that cover a given point as following the Poisson law. Okay, so now we move to the main uh, uh, concern in the talk, uh, uh, where uh, we uh, look at now cells which are defined by uh, the uh, signal to interference ratio. So the setting is a little bit like in the Boolean model. You have a set of points xi. Well, we can take them Poisson if you want, or something we will take more general po point processes uh, so later on. <coughs> uh, on top of that, we had two uh, random variables, pi and ti. So think of pi like being power and ti being like threshold. Um, uh, one gives oneself a function L, um, uh, which uh, associates to a vector, so it's the attenuation function, uh, and for the, uh, one defines the, the, the cell attached to uh, point X0, which you think as uh, an emitter, as the set of locations Y in the plane, such that the power emitted by emitter 0 at X0 times the attenuation function between X0 and Y, divided by the interference plus noise, so W is terminal noise, I phi is the interference, so that's the sum for all, so we look at the cell of point zero, so that's the sum for all I, all other emitters different from zero, of PI times L of Y minus XI. So it's also known as the shot noise process, for those familiar uh, with uh, what happens on the line, when you sum uh, a certain number of, uh, from, uh, seen from the points of the Poisson point process, the effect of an impulse, uh, with, uh, which would be the L function, that's what people are used to call the shot noise process. So this would be like the spatial shot noise process. And the last, uh, so, so you ask the region where this ratio is above a certain threshold, and that's what you would get from Shannon's uh, theorem if you had a Gaussian channel as the region where you can sustain a given bit rate. Okay, if you have above this uh, threshold for a uh, signal to inverse ratio, that's uh, what you would have. Last object in this formula, kappa. So uh, in the CDM example, this would be like the orthogonality factor defined from the processing gain. Uh, and so for us, it will just be a parameter that varies says, between zero and one, okay? Okay, so this is the sort of uh, first motivation, indeed, CDMA. Antennas uh, make a thought experiment where you have, uh, like, a mobile at location Y. Uh, you pick a given reference antenna, say, close, the closest one, for instance, uh, and uh, you ask whether the signals to noise plus interference ratio is above a given threshold. So it's a very natural model in this setting, I guess. No. We'll, uh, there will be cases where I will have to, but I will mention that. Okay, so what are the, what is the uh, model looking like? Uh, so run a simulation and that's what you get. So we see some completely different phenomena from those. So first, I mean, if you do a first simulation, you see, I mean, uh, something which looks like uh, uh, the Boolean model. So we see here the emitters. And we see something which, at first glance, look like sort of a bit uh, transformed disks on, uh, on top of these emitters. But what happened, and what's interesting, is that the shape of each of the region is adapting to the local geometry. And the reason is essentially interference. Interference is a geometry-based concept, and so in areas where you have aggregates, clusters, I mean, the shape reacts in an adaptive way uh, to uh, account for the uh, interference, okay? And this will be the main concern of the talk, to try to understand what happens here, to compute, and to uh, ask various questions, of course, uh, uh, on the uh, coverage. So coverage will be what's the proportion or the fraction of the plane which is covered by these cells. <coughs> uh, connectivity. Uh, do we have, in what cases do we have uh, uh, um, uh, infinite components uh, of um, inter uh, um, intersecting cells, things like that. 
So here, you, well, for these value parameters, you think you are close yet to the uh, still to the uh, Boolean model. But when you start playing with the parameters, for instance, uh, changing here the uh, the, the, th the threshold, uh, then you start uh, seeing that you have really crazy forms, and which actually have been observed in CDMA networks. This would be the level sets of this uh, capacity of this uh, um, signal to interference ratio for a given antenna. And you see that the cells are not convex; they even have holes. And we will explain that. We'll explain what happens. You see, in this area, you have a big uh, yellow cell somewhere in the hole in the vicinity of an antenna. And so, I will try to explain that later. Okay. So that's the set of questions we will address. So we'll address most of them in the non-homogeneous Poisson case for the location of emitters. And we ask questions um, about model definition and uh, uh, calculate, well, try to compute things uh, on the, the coverage and the connectivity. And I will give also a few um, um, relations to, well, qualitative results on connections with earlier model of stochastic geometry. So let me do the. Uh, First, uh, a part about the, the definition, the, the good definition, the fact that the model is well defined, and go rather quickly on that. So, the shot, in order for the shot noise to be integrable, it's enough using Campbell's formula to, to, to show that it's enough to have the DL function integrate with respect to the mu measure. So, that comes from Campbell's uh, formula. The points here are assumed to be Poisson. Right. The, I, uh, the, throughout um, uh, most of the talk, I will, uh, the, I will uh, take a Poisson assumptions. Uh, well, the interference could be infinite, and uh, that's what you want to avoid. Uh, so you add a um, denumerable, the short noise is a denumerable sum, and so if the L function is too as a, a too fat a tail, so, and, and for instance, if the P would be. Uh, uh, the power would be very big. You may have something very far away, which creates a big mass, and you add a large number of those. So, so well, unless yeah, of, they could be limited to one point. If I find it would be infinity, okay. But you 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 are interested in uh, uh, looking more carefully at uh, all, uh, also there would be other cases which you. Uh, uh, don't, uh, would be um, tr trying to avoid also is that uh, a point is covered by an infinite number of cells. So there are various issues of this nature. Okay, so there, there, are, there is a finiteness of I find and I come to another point. So if you add a little bit more than that, so here I've said nothing on the L function, but if you if you add a, a slightly stronger condition on the integrability of L with respect to mu, you get that the I phi function is not only finite, but also continuous in Y, provided L is. And uh, as a corollary of that, so if L and I phi are continuous, uh, then uh, CI defined by this inequality is a random closed set. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, say, since we have uh, this, this uh, 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 non strict inequality. Yep. The fact that it's random is clear, the fact that it's closed is clear. So, so what's the meaning of random closed set? Uh, well, some of the uh, convergences will be stated uh, for the topology of random closed sets. So, uh, yes, right. Uh, so, um, and now to uh, answer uh, Armand's question, uh, uh, so one can give sufficient conditions for uh, uh, the union. So, if you are, you are partly interested in the union, of, so the union of a, of a closed set is not very close when it's a denumerable quantity. Okay, so and this is one of the the, the, the the questions to just to double check. And so if the L function, as you see, it's uh, uh, that's the typical form that we will take. So uh, like a, a power decrease, if the L function has this shape. And if you have certain moment conditions on uh, on p over t and on w the noise with respect to the coefficient alpha here that shows up, then you show that psi is a random closed set, the union as well. So, well, with reasonable conditions, you are dealing with objects which are really, really always like we saw, namely a, a union of closed uh, sets, the union of which is also a closed set. Okay, so computational things now. Um, look at... Uh, Call peaks of y, so a peak location y, 
uh, add an antenna at location X with uh, on an emitter with power P threshold T and call P so Y the probability that Y is in the cell of X. Okay? So for those familiar with uh, point processes and Poisson point processes, adding an antenna at point X uh, is still a vision of the Poisson field as a whole, but under the so-called palm version of it. Okay, so it just uh, make no nothing specific by adding a point, but just uh, changing a little bit the uh, the way of sampling the point process. So seen from an antenna, w I look at uh, located at X. I look at uh, location Y and ask whether Y belongs to the cell of antenna X. So we can rewrite the ratio SIR as this inequality. So P over TL minus W minus I phi. So I multiply by the denominator my SIR. And, uh, and you see a handle here to compute this probability because as we shall see, we know the Laplace in explicit form of I phi. If we assume that W is given, if we know the law of P over T, then basically we can compute that, okay? And uh, this is the first uh, and one of the basic things. So the shop noise, as we all well know, in the real line has an explicit Laplace transform. And this is uh, the expression of this Laplace transform. So it's given in terms of the Laplace transform of the powers and the, uh, the, the Laplace of the shop noise at location Y is the exponential of a certain integral with respect to the underlying measure, and the function to be integrated is 1 minus LP of Xi, the argument of the Laplace, taken at point L1 minus C. Okay? Good. So once you have that, then we follow the program uh, which we just mentioned. So it's quite computational. So take, uh, here's an example. Mu is the bag, so your homogeneous Poisson process. L is uh, z to the minus four. So you don't want the, power, the you don't want the thing to explode at the origin. So I put max of z to the minus four and r to the minus four. P uh, take power exponential with mean m. Then this is an explicit expression that you get. Uh, so I don't detail that, but I mean it's like in Turing theory. If you put them I in mean, a few uh, assumptions, then you can get explicit forms. So it's not so important, but uh, Practically, having the Laplace will be very important in, uh, for, for numerical exploitation. And uh, so you know the Laplace of one of these three terms. You add three random variables uh, on, the, on the real line, either positive or negative, and you want to, to know the mass that the sum of these three variables put on the positive half axis. And this is well known to be representable as a contour integral. So if you have y, uh, random variable with the density and Fourier uh, Psi, then the probability that uh, Y is positive is given by a singular contour integral. So that's a handle to compute things. Okay, now, uh, so, <coughs> of course, when you have these peaks of Y, you will have the, the, the surface, uh, average surface of a cell and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, key properties of the, of, the, uh, of the process. Now comes the key thing which will explain the non-convexity and the holes and the deformation. So um, assume that n cells cover location y. It means that for all i, ranging from 1 to n, pi l of y minus xi divided by the interference plus noise is larger than ti, right? sum up all these inequalities. It means that the sum of the TIs is bounded from above. If you see, if you sum all, all of these terms, you see showing up here, uh, sum of these terms, you find back the denominator. See, so, well, uh, here you could put it in W and T. It's just kappa here, so uh, that's, uh, so it, it would change a little bit the constant, but the, uh, the answer would you just want to give the idea here. So it means that the sum of the TIs is less than one. Therefore, N is bounded. And more precisely, if the T random variable is bounded from below by tau, then call KY the number of cells that cover location Y, then KY is always less than one over tau. It will be one over kappa tau otherwise, okay? So it means that I say this is a spatial analog of the S server Q. In the S server Q, no location in time is covered by more than the S points, than S services. So, and what you do in Q3, you shift, you are, you are over time, the only thing you can do, you shift things, 
okay, so, and that's queuing. Here what you do is that when uh, in no, no point in space is covered by more than S cells and uh, you don't shift, you shrink. Okay, and, and this explains the holes and this explains the way the things deform themselves, the, the cells uh, in the vicinity of uh, other, other emitters. Okay, so let me skip that, uh, but using again uh, various, uh, uh, just want to give the idea here. So uh, you're interested, so up to now we looked at one cell. We centered our vision on one cell, on one antenna, and looked at, uh, say, the shape of the cell, the volume of the cell, the peaks of Y function out of which you compute the volume and things like that. You can now do the, just what one do, does in QC, you look at the equivalent of steady state, you now pick a, a point in space and ask how many cells cover this point. This is the KY function, which we know is bounded from above by a constant, okay? And uh, using uh, the notion of um, um, uh, uh, factorial moment measures, one can compute also from the knowledge of the distribution function of uh, the I phi function uh, the probability that the point is covered by, a, a, say, k cells, uh, and so one can compute uh, well, uh, more precisely that uh, one can compute the uh, factorial moment of order n of the ky variable from an integral expression which involves the distribution function of i phi. So it's it's a bit technical, but uh, it's possible. And uh, um, a, a few funny things that one gets. I will stop with this type of results uh, here for the computational part is an analog of uh, Little's law. Uh, so that's in the homogeneous Poisson case. E of K naught, the number of cells that cover location zero, or any location, we are in the, in the stationary case, is lambda times the expectation of the surface of a typical cell. So that's, uh, again, a nice uh, analog. And out of, out of the earlier computations, one can compute, for instance, what I call, what is called in uh, socket geometry volume fraction. That's a fraction of the space covered by psi. And in, in the, uh, so that's really the answer to coverage, okay? So what is the proportion of space where, uh, uh, say, uh, one can receive at least one of the antennas, one of the emitters, above a certain bitrate defined by Shannon's uh, formula, right? Okay, so now qualitative results. So the first interesting thing is to rewrite the take big kappa now, and we will try to play with kappa, okay? So CI, the cell of antenna emitter I at kappa, uh, can be rewritten like this. We have seen this formula, that's just the ratio rewritten uh, in a different term. And what's interesting is to, to see that actually when this vanishes, when you take kappa is equal to zero, and if you take L to be uh, Z to the minus something, what you recognize here, let's say, or L, any decreasing function of distance, you recognize something which is a disk centered in uh, Xi, okay? And uh, indeed, when kappa goes to zero, uh, uh, xi of kappa goes to a certain xi tilde, where xi tilde is a Boolean model, so the union of disks. And each each of the disks indeed is that which would be defined by uh, by the rule where you just uh, remove the kappa. So it's when you take one cell, it's trivial, but then uh, comes uh, Armand's earlier question to to show that what is what does this convergence mean? You have a closed set. Uh, which is uh, this, this coverage, this union of, uh, of uh, strand cells, and you want that the, the, the whole closed set converges to a closed set, which is a union of balls, right? So there are such questions in the topological uh, issues, the topological concepts, and this is the uh, Matteron uh, theory of um, uh, the topology of random closed set, which uh, can be used to prove that we have this almost sure convergence. Okay, so, Convergence with pictures. Uh, so here I let kappa go to zero. And so we have a continuum where we move from one situation to a second one, to a third, to a fourth. And that's the, the coverage process on its way to a Boolean model. So look at, so here this is the thing where we don't see anything. It's just a, uh, I mean, it's sort of very strange uh, things. 
But here we, we see really the, 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 uh, the shape of one of these uh, disks, okay, on its way to a disk. So you see this uh, in the vicinity of antennas, there are very strange uh, things that happen. Uh, but we see the shape uh, growing to a, to a disk, okay? So, and, uh, so this can be exploited mathematically by doing expansions, Taylor expansions, basically. So if you can do, uh, so that's just the ball, right? Uh, that's just the expression of the, the ball condition. If you can do an expansion of this function, so it depends on the description function of P, T, and W, if you can do a Taylor expansion of this, then you can do a Taylor expansion of the, of the probability of interest, which defines almost everything, in terms of a zero order term, which is that of the, um, of the Boolean model, and a Taylor expansion in which the uh, term of order k only involves the moments of order k of the shot noise. And so you remember we had formula, explicit formulas. I mean, differentiating them k times with maple is just uh, elementary, and you have a pretty good uh, way of uh, computing expansions of high order. So this would be the contour integral, which is um, well, we have to do that with care. This would be, for instance, the uh, and this would be uh, approximations of order 14 and 15 of the uh, of the p function, and that's for this for the volume of a cell, uh, various types of um, um, higher order, high order uh, uh, Taylor expansions for the uh, quantities of interest. Okay, uh, so first that that gives an idea, I mean, so uh, of uh, how this uh, these uh, things uh, shape and uh, what is the, the the explanation of this phenomenon. Let's look another thing, another convergence result which is useful. Ln of z, take ln of z to be 1 plus z to the minus n. So I will harden alpha, make alpha bigger. And you know in urban areas, the alpha parameter uh, has to, tends to be bigger than in, uh, in the open uh, fields where it's smaller, right? So that's another qualitative reason. So for w is equal to 0, uh, you can prove that when n goes to infinity, c and i goes to vi, where vi is just the Voronoi cell of location of antenna i, emitter i. Okay. The distance is really good for the yes. But you could use others. You could use others, and uh, so this this is a sort of visualization of uh, which gives a sort of again clear idea of what happens. So it explains roughly the, the, the shape that we have seen. So when you harden uh, the uh, the attenuation, so you see you have shapes which of course are not the Voronoi, but but which tend to the Voronoi, and. Uh, uh, while respecting the, uh, the, the condition of uh, coverage that I said, no point in space will be covered by more than, than uh, S times, right? Do you have any, any estimate as far as how high uh, the exponent is to be before you start living in light volumes? Uh, well... Uh, because if it gets to be too high, you won't get it. Yeah, yeah, so I think uh, this one is like 100, uh, whereas in uh, urban areas you have alpha, which is like 8 or something like that. So you would be here. But I have no, I have no mathematical result now, just the experimental ones. So now, connectivity. So I've covered, co uh, covered coverage. One other question. Yes. Um, your orthogonality factor may not be the same throughout. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, one can take kappa i's and, and t, well, but, uh, so... Does it simply mean that there's the region over which k is constant, you have this division and then you would do it differently? Yeah, so what happens, for instance, the result of, uh, on the upper bound on, on, uh, on coverage uh, is true when you take the t's random bounded from below by something. Okay. So that's perhaps an answer to mine. Okay, now connectivity. Connectivity. So now, uh, start of uh, stop of thinking uh, CDMA and start thinking uh, uh, mobile ad hoc network. Okay. Pick uh, now. Uh, so actually, there are no emitters and receptors, but everybody is emitter and set, uh, receptor and relay. Okay. And uh, and uh, so you are interested uh, in uh, in now. So the the, the locations XI are both emitters and receptors, and you want to, you ask the question of connectivity, okay? So who can talk to whom? And is there a way to talk far away? 
Okay, so this is the question of connectivity, which has been addressed by many authors using the Boolean model. And the, the part of the talk which starts now consists in trying to address the connectivity issue, not with the Boolean model, which is not taking into account the physical layer, but uh, moving to the physical layer with the SIR. So results based on the Boolean model, so are about as follows, so it's best described by pictures. So uh, take uh, uh, this mobile uh, uh, to be located at the uh, as a Poisson point process in plane, and say that two nodes are connected is the distance between them is less than a certain range R. Okay, that's the classical model. And this model is equivalent to the Boolean model where each point of the point process is the center of a disk of radius R over, R over 2 for connectivity. And so, uh, if for small intensity you have an infinite number of isolated islands, like, like this one, or this one, you see an island which is isolated, uh, and above a certain threshold, R is fixed, threshold for the intensity of the, of the mobiles, then you get a so-called infinite component with a certain number of islands which are isolated. But if you have an infinite component, uh, so this object uh, uh, allows to uh, uh, find a path which will reach whatever point of this infinite component. So not everybody is connected, but well, a large fraction of people are connected, and, and so this is a desirable property of, uh, of the network. Okay, and when you go on increasing infinite, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the intensity, uh, the number of islands basically vanishes. And so uh, this was first studied by Ed Gilbert, by the way, in the 60s. It's based on the Boolean model. It started this uh, 61, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, so the, the main theorem is that there exists a critical node density lambda star, such that if the node density is smaller than lambda star, the network is made on an infinite number of finite clusters. And if the node density is greater than lambda star, there is a unique infinite cluster. Okay, and that would be the fraction of connected nodes when you increase the intensity. Okay, now you uh, all guess what the question is. Uh, now, again, uh, take uh, xi, pi, w, t as before. Uh, k, kappa again is the uh, orthogonality factor. And we say that node j can receive data from node i if uh, if the uh, so we, if the, the power received at location i from j uh, oh, sorry node j uh, uh, from node i at location j so p i l of x i minus x j divided by the interference plus noise is larger than threshold okay and two nodes will be said to be neighbors if they can change data in both directions so this and the dual uh, connect, uh, uh, relation. So, and the new thing here, compared to the, to the uh, Gilbert uh, uh, percolation uh, uh, model, is that when kappa is equal, so first, when kappa is equal to zero, you find back the Boolean model as before. But the new completely new thing is that when, when uh, kappa is positive, there is an upper bound on the number of neighbors. Okay, and uh, you can cook up examples. So this is the uh, so this is the upper bound that uh, uh, John was discussing just a bit earlier. So let now we have t and kappa showing up. If kappa is larger than 1 over t, then the node degree is limited by 1. Therefore, the network is completely disconnected, whatever the density of nodes, whatever the powers. So the physical model may lead to situations where connectivity vanishes in a very, uh, very uh, final way. And that's a picture of that. So that would be the case where kappa is equal to 0. I increase kappa to something very small, and my infinite component disappears, and we see the islands showing up, the finite number of uh, isolated uh, islands. One question I had uh, when I heard this the first time is that, okay, giving the CIR uh, interpretation and mm -hmm. not constrained yep. interpretation, which is not really the case. Right. Uh, in what sense this is actually a hard? Uh, do you have a softer version of the result? Well, you can, of course. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so you can weaken that, but so here, uh, so uh, you you really ask the question of of uh, so of having a given bit rate. So if you remove this thing and say that you can have a arbitrary slow uh, low bit rate, and then perhaps you have another model. But here I fix my notion of connectivity. This would be would be for say transmitting. Uh, 
a voice at a decent uh, speed or something like that. Yeah, right. And that that's so. So you can weaken that in various ways, but uh, th that's the the first attempt. Okay, and the main results, I won't prove that. And here, uh, at this stage, uh, we uh, have that, uh, uh, we have a proof, um, we are working on the extension, but we have a proof only in the uh, finite range uh, attenuation function case. When, uh, so when kappa is equal to zero, percolation occurs above certain node density. When kappa is larger than one over t, no percolation, whatever the node density. But there exists a, cap, a critical value kappa star, so that's by monotonicity, it's easy to prove that kappa star is positive or zero <laughs> and less than one over t. But the key thing is proving that kappa star is positive. And the main result is that uh, under certain technical conditions, and we are trying to improve that at this stage, uh, uh, kappa star is positive, okay? And, uh, and we proved it in the bounded uh, range case uh, using um, uh, a percolation theory. Okay, so uh, I've skipped the proof, uh, which is a bit technical, and I move to uh, applications to perhaps more practical uh, protocol issues. So, uh, I, I will discuss the MAC layer now in the mobile adult network, and it will be a very simplified model. I don't discuss uh, 802.11 or anything specific, but a sort of a global vision. The general idea is uh, that you compare to what people do very often of putting uh, mobiles here and there and trying to solve uh, an optimization problem that you say, well, why don't we look at the overall thing on the plane, average out over all possible locations and then do the optimization, okay? And so that's the general idea and philosophy of this uh, uh, ge stochastic geometry approach, okay? Uh, like in Turing theorem, you don't compute uh, for all point processes, uh, scheduling, you, you do, let's say it's Poisson, and you compute, and then you optimize. So that's the basic model that we had before for, for the mobile adult network. But now we had the sort of, uh, I mean, the uh, poor man's representation of, uh, of the Mac layer by saying that we have random variable EI uh, associated with each, each uh, station, which gives the right for I to access the medium in current slot. Okay. And so the interference then uh, is uh, uh, I phi E, which is just uh, the sum of the, uh, or the same sum as before, but multiplied by this here. So it's as if you were doing power control, but with a zero one low. Yes, you must slow the time. Yeah. Oh, let's let's uh, take slot. Yeah. Okay. And so then mobile active in the slot can be received by that uh, mobile located at X active in slot can be received by that located at Y if uh, PL divided by W plus, plus I phi E is, is above threshold. Okay? So can many, more than one user yeah. access at the same time? Right, but... So there's different motivation, for instance. So can... Yeah. So what you expect, compared to, uh, to uh, say, an Aloha or um, uh, Ethernet type uh, uh, concept, is that there, there should be some spatial reuse. So the, the P parameter is really the, so this description of the Mac layer that you see that uh, if P is small enough, there will be like a sort of exclusion disk around you where nobody will emit. And, uh, and uh, there you can expect that somebody else emits that far away, and then you can reuse uh, this uh, shared medium, uh, uh, spatially, in a clever way, okay? So, and, uh, so that's the, you just introduce this extra parameter, P. Okay, so I, I won't rework the whole thing, but uh, basically you, the probability of a successful transmission at distance R, so you assume, you check whether you can send this uh, bitrate at distance R, so we have seen uh, how to compute that already. So that's the probability that something at distance r is in the cell of. And so this is the expression for that. <coughs> and here it's just a, a function of lambda p. So you see the lambda p showing up here. And you get an explicit integral for the, using again uh, this uh, 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 integral representation uh, for the Laplace, uh, okay? Okay. <coughs> And now, uh, question, what value of P maximizes the spatial density of successful transmission given that each communication attempt is toward the receiver distance R? <coughs> and the answer is from the optimization of the function lambda PR of lambda. So you're not only interested in maximizing PR of lambda or PR of lambda P, because then it's easy. Given that you emit, the best thing is that nobody does. 
and and then you are sure that you will maximize. So what you want is this, like a social thing. You want to be uh, to be social in the sense that when you emit, it works at distance r with high probability. But the largest possible population of emitters do also, and that's where the really the optimum uh, takes place. So what you want to optimize is lambda p of lambda, which is spatial density of successful access to channel with respect to uh, lambda, or, or p if you want. Okay. So it's actually it's only a function of uh, lambda here. So we, we saw lambda p showing up. So so when the so you can get explicit forms for all of these things using uh, the uh, the formulas based on the integration uh, Poisson integration formula. And it's quite computational. So if uh, if we have a function uh, in uh, of the form u to the minus beta, you get quite close form expressions for the uh, for the there is an integral showing up uh, here. For the expression of lambda max, the best way of uh, the best p or the best lambda, and it can be computed explicitly. Um, that's that would be the optimal intensity and the optimal um, uh, what I call the uh, spatial density of successful transmission is also explicit. Now here perhaps is the most interesting part because we see geometry showing up this time a stochastic geometry argument which uh, which is very I mean, um, natural in this setting. I will introduce now two points processes. So you have the, the point process of mo all mobiles, and we pick two point processes: phi one intensity lambda p emitters. So those, these are those allowed to access the, the channel thanks to the, what the, the, the max says. And phi naught, uh, those who don't emit and we, are, we receive receivers. Intensity lambda 1 is with spatial intensity, of course. So uh, I call individual progress the effective distance traversed in one hope. So think of everybody having to transmit uh, data very far away. Say this guy has to transmit, and he has to transmit at plus infinity in this direction. And so it does that, as you know, in many hopes. Okay? And you, the individual progress in one hope for this guy, I pretend is the max over all possible receivers of the effective distance in the direction I want to go in. So I, I pick the best which I can receive. And, and what is the distance of my real progress is, the, uh, is the, the norm of this vector times the cos of the uh, angle, right? And I multiply that. I should multiply that by the, uh, an indicator function that it works. I, for, for mathematical convenience, I multiply that by the probability that it works. Namely, and this probability depends only on the, on the norm of this vector. Okay, this, uh, let's assume this one is located at zero. So it will be p of norm of xj lambda p. Okay? So So everybody has to transmit data everywhere, okay? And this guy has to transmit data the at plus infinity on the x direction. He does this in many hopes. Okay? And now in the earlier slides I was fixing R right. and asking what is the best way once R is fixed to jump this R and to socially maximize the number, of people can do that. the number of people will do that. No, I, I don't fix R and I will ask the same question. I don't fix R, but say where can I jump best? Okay? And that I call and that, that I call that I call progress. Okay? And uh, and then there is the notion of spatial density of progress. Okay? Which is the expectation of D multiplied by lambda P. Okay, and you understand here really the, where the optimum uh, lies. I mean, so why? So what happens is that again we have the same phenomenon as before. So if p is too large, there will be many of these reds, and so interference will be high. So you won't be able to jump very far away. But in addition, if p is large, one is p is small, and then these guys, the blue ones, will be rare, and you will be a bad. You will make a bad jump, not too far away. So really, then. I mean, having P here, the, the role of P and the role of the Mac is pre very precisely, uh, uh, I mean, felt, I guess. Uh, the yeah, and indeed, so max I, I call this spatial density of progress. No, I take lambda P times d bar of lambda P, and I try to to uh, maximize over P, and that's that's uh, that's a way of really optimizing the Mac layer in this setting. 
and this reduces to quite explicit things. This uh, is uh, linked to the external short noise theory. So, well, let's take L of R to be uh, R to the minus beta. Then you have this explicit expression for uh, for uh, spatial density of progress. So it's uh, linked to the max shot noise, and the reason for which there is max shot noise is that you see it's the max of a function of the locations of the finite finite points. So it's not a sum, it's a max. And the max shot noise as an explicit expression is stochastic geometry, and so you, you cook up the, uh, I mean, you describe that mathematically, and you compute the integral average over all lo uh, 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 location of blues and reds, and get the, uh, and so this is this is quite uh, explicit. So that would be uh, how to how to optimize uh, the um, spatial density of progress in function of p. And there is an optimal uh, strategy. There is an optimal p which makes it so that everybody who emits uh, does it in such a way that globally, by unit of space, everybody progresses. Well, by one progresses by unit of space as much as possible. Okay, so the one can see that as sort of a deviation of Macri. The others here, so that you worried about the fractal, I mean, sorry, uh, ratios of probability other than the others or not? Because you, uh, your result, yeah. if I understand correctly, is it says the typical situation is like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the, these, are, these are always, so the principle, as I said, is that so, I mean, it can be very bad in some cases, but yeah. I mean, average over a huge plane of, uh, of uh, location of mobiles. If everybody does so, I, pay, I make like a, an empirical average, an ergodic average over this large plane, and I find something which is the optimal of uh, all these random strategies, which is consistent. Of course, if you try to change the information structure and, and, and have an exclusion disk which is a hard disk, then uh, you have another thing. So this is uh, the, this is the uh, poor man's uh, optimization that scheme. That, that, uh, in, in absolute numbers, by thinking that it's uh, if everybody is like the average, then the other number is going to be better overall. Is that where am I wrong? I didn't get your point. I Sorry. can translate uh, the sort of average uh, or typical behavior of, of, of the typical locality to, uh, to an overall number of, of people that can behave that way if they all behave similarly. Yes, 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 yes. So if all so behave similarly, then there are no other. Yeah, uh, so this, this, this means, this, means uh, uh, this is an ergodic process. Right. And this means uh, are also uh, ergodic means. So uh, that, that's the average we would get uh, by. OK, uh, one more thing, perhaps, or should I stop here? I don't know what's best. I wanted to discuss uh, downlink power control. So up to now, you perhaps will tell me that uh, this is nice, perhaps, but that, that, that power control is not taken into account. Up to now, I took P's and T's as being random variables IID. And we very know, well know that <laughs> things are a bit more complex. So actually, we worked very hard for uh, uh, to try to take this into account. And uh, uh, I will show you, I will not give results, but how, the, how power control can be taken into account and again be reduced to stochastic geometry questions. So. Uh, this would be now in a downlink of CDMA, YJ location of the base stations, XIJ the location of mobiles to be served by station J. So the index is I. So upper index is for uh, base stations and lower index for, for mobiles. And I look at the downlink. And so, of course, you, you say that downlink power control is feasible if there exist powers positive and finite, such that uh, the power emitted from station J to mobile I times the attenuation, uh, the pass loss uh, from uh, base station to mobile, divided by the total interference plus noise. Here there are two uh, orthogonality factors, an in-cell and an out-cell uh, orthogonality factor is above threshold. And it's well known to be reducible to uh, eigenvalue problem for certain matrices. And uh, actually, one can show that the power location problem is feasible. It's a sufficient condition, if, which makes a lot of sense in this homogeneous case. If in each cell, the population of mobile NJN is such that kappa times the cardinal of the set NJM, the mobiles associated to uh, cell J, uh, plus uh, gamma times, you have a double sum over all stations K, Different from J, so that's a condition for for, for, station, for base station J, times the sum of all mobiles in this station 
uh, of certain ratio of attenuation function, pass loss, is less than a constant. So this is like the substochastic uh, condition associated to the eigenvalue uh, thing of Hanley, okay? Right, so, uh, and so this is a nice uh, condition uh, which we, uh, because it's, it's purely decentralized. So you do that cell by cell. This condition is cell by cell and it only bears, as you see, on the mobiles that belong to cell J. So you have to know the, uh, you have to know the uh, location of the other base stations, but not of the mobiles in the other base stations. So uh, this is in this, uh, this, this setting that we developed in uh, an Infocom paper last, uh, presented last week. Okay, and uh, so uh, so uh, let me just uh, say a few things. So pick the base stations to be either Poisson or deterministic. Pick the uh, overall point process of mobiles to be a Poisson with intensity lambda m. And uh, pick in this model nj of m, the subpopulation associated to, to uh, base station j, as being those points those mobiles that belong to the Voronoi cell of the base station J, right? So this gives uh, to two parametric models, MD or MM, uh, D for uh, deterministic for server for the, for the point, uh, point process of um, uh, base stations, and M for the mobiles. And there is a first global negative result, whatever the model, MM or MD, None of this model leads to a feasible global power attribution pro uh, 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 problem. Almost surely, the maximal eigenvalue is plus infinity. Okay, so it's never feasible. So the idea is that you have to do some admission control and reduce the number of mobiles per uh, base station uh, for those, uh, and that's primarily due to the viability of the Poisson clustering. So you have made too many in some cells in front of it. And so no, that's, uh, again, uh, it's, it's, here you have not yet tried to compute. I uh, just try to solve the power control problem, reduce that, yeah, glo the global one, it, it right. taking um, uh, intercell interference. I try to solve it, I take Poisson assumptions, a realization of a Poisson model in the infinite plane, and it doesn't scale, basically the eigenvalue is plus infinity. Almost surely. So there is no expectation. No, it's not the worst case. It's always we are always in the worst case. <laughs> the no, I meant worst case locally because you have a partial model that is global. So there's the yeah. chance that somewhere they might be very bad and that's case. Yeah, right, right. So this is the idea. Yeah. And so uh, we uh, so you have to reduce things. And so to reduce things, we uh, try to compute given a, an intensity of base station, given an epsilon, an error term find the maximal intensity of mobile such that the condition of substochasticity is violated. Okay? And so what I just want to conclude with is to show that, I mean, these things you can compute. In, uh, so uh, this would be the picture using stochastic geometry. You, so you remember you have this double sum. And this double sum in the Poisson case, uh, let's say the Poisson case. So the sum, uh, you have to sum over all base station different from station zero. So station zero is here to sum over all points, all mobiles in the Voronoi cell, uh, the pass loss to uh, a station K divided by the pass loss from zero to, uh, to the uh, mobile, right? That's right. And so, I mean, uh, you use Poisson integration uh, ideas. So basically what you say is that, so pick this, this is the base station zero. You pick a point which is a mobile, it's at distance R. So you do your integration, so R, so there will be a dr, uh, R, dr, uh, moving to, uh, to, to um, uh, polar coordinates. And then, then you express that, that around this mobile here, there would be no other base station, because we say that this one is closer to this one than to any other. That's the definition of the Voronoi. So E minus lambda Bs by R square. And then you say that, you have to do the second integral, the second sum with respect to k, and, uh, and here everything will be outside this disk. So an integral from r to infinity, and again using uh, Campbell's formula, this would be the moving to polar coordinates, this would be u, l of u, du function, and, you, and multiplied by the product of intensities, multiplied by twice, well, the square of 2 pi, right? 
And so, I mean, when you put uh, explicit expressions for, for the L function, then you can compute these things in explicit form, and you can get, so that's for the mean, but you can also use, of course, bounds to get the capacity uh, of the I mean, maximal load of such a CDMA network uh, using Markov option of bounds on the, this type of calculation. Huh? Okay, I'm a bit late, sorry. Uh, some of these papers on, the, on this web page and uh, the, the one, um, some of the, the, the last two uh, are partly in the, um, in the last Infocom uh, presentation. And uh, uh, but so feel be glad to discuss anything uh, on the matter with you. Send me an email and send you the papers if, you, if you're interested. Thank Stop you here. It looks that you assume the space is homogeneous. So basically, we can bring another way. Human will affect the communication between all nodes. Mm -hmm. But that's not true, right? For example, if, if we use this model in this group, we are not humans. Then all the humans will affect the signal of the transmission between nodes, right? Mm -hmm. So how about if we want to consider this issue? Well, uh, I think the uh, first, I mean, this was not perhaps clear in the last part of the talk, but the first part was all uh, uh, said, uh, uh, to, uh, assuming a general measure mu. So this measure could be uh, any measure. So it, it could have, uh, um, uh, it, so you could have non-homogeneous uh, settings and clusters and things like that. or. So, I mean, not all that computa some computations use very much the, uh, the symmetry and the, but you can use an arbitrary measure and some of these things extend and can be computed. For instance, all the first part, the convergence results, the expressions for the coverage, the type shape of the cell, things like that, uh, would, would work for arbitrary measures, mu. So the, it's, not, it's not limited to the homogeneous case. Mu is a measure, not constant. Mm -hmm. Result where we are hardening uh, by naming the infinity mm -hmm. and showed the convergence mm -hmm. of the model at n towards the model at uh, n infinity. Yeah. Uh, can you make statements as to what happens uh, at the regions and stuff? For example, is there a way of, of coming up with some kind of stochastic comparisons that would say that the typical cell at n is larger or smaller than? Generic cell at n prime n is more or less than n prime. Or is that clearly not true? In other words, that the hardening, you cannot associate kind of an intuitive notion that as you harden, clearly you either shrink or enlarge the human nutrient. So, I mean, the, the, the proof of the, when you harden the thing is, uh, it's like in Laplace method, so you look at some sort of dominant term in an expansion and uh, so well I, I saw a little bit of some of uh, these uh, ideas of based on the convex comparison but I uh, never found out a good way of proving that so it's I mean we have convex objects but uh, I mean proving stochastic comparison results on this object seems to be a non uh, non non difficult non easy task at least I, I mean I didn't find a good way a lot of questions. When you study the connectivity, from my understanding, you assume that all users are transmitting. <coughs> in the real network, the situation may be some users are transmitting, yeah. and some users are hearing. Yeah, so right. the communication is from some user who produces interference to some user who doesn't produce interference. Right. So can uh, this be incorporated to your analysis? Yeah, I guess here you could, uh, with this lambda p, and so you uh, you could just, uh, I mean, change a little bit, add to the uh, parameters, uh, third point process of those which don't want to emit. So it, it would be uh, it would be same to add a little bit to the blues that I had. So, but I think it wouldn't change the uh, it wouldn't change the structure of the uh, of the uh, of the proof. So the same conclusion is still hold only the spread spectrum. I think so. Let's thank the speaker. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you. Thank you.
in the round table at 215, I believe, at the uh, conference uh, room for the center. So you're welcome to come for about an hour and a half. Right. So if you have more questions, please come. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs>